Hello, and welcome to episode nine of the Sarah Seams podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Sarah Seams podcast. My name is Sarah. I'm the maker here at this channel, and I'm coming to you from Columbus, Ohio, where I live with my partner, Troy, and our two cats, Alex and Moo. Um, Moo always likes to come yell while I'm recording, so you might hear him later. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Sarah underscore Seams and on Ravelry at Sarah Ribble. I'll put those up here on the screen. And right off the bat, I just want to apologize today for my voice. I'm a little bit under the weather, um, you know, just cold, some cold symptoms going on. But I definitely still wanted to record today because I have a lot to share with you. And I felt like if I went three weeks without recording that I was going to have way too much. <laughs> so I'm just going to jump right in. Um, and I apologize if there's any coughing or, you know, I'll try and edit that stuff out. But I uh, hope you'll bear with me. Um, through this little bit of a sickness that I'm going through. Um, so first of all, what I'm wearing, I am wearing a new uh, Closet Core NYX dress that I just finished this morning, um, oh, which I did not say, by the way, today is March 31st, 2023. Um, so this pattern is available up to a 74 inch bust and hip. I'll stand up a little bit so you can see it. Um, I really, really like this dress. Uh, I'll get into a little bit more detail on it in um, a spring sewing plans video that I'm planning to release this week as well. But this is the short sleeve version um, and it's also a little bit shorter in the skirt. It's just two tiers instead of the full length three tiers. It has a little elastic waist and some fabric covered buttons. And I'll put a little video in here so you can see uh, the full dress. And speaking of that other video, I'm planning to record that. Uh, today also and hopefully release that tomorrow or Sunday and that is going to be going over all of my spring sewing plans so I'm going to show you how I do my planning um, the fabrics that I'm going to use the patterns I'm going to use and just talk through all of that in a separate special episode so I'm excited about that so this is also my first FO for the week um, the fabric is from closet core Fabric. So this is a full closet core baby, closet core pattern, closet core fabrics. It's a really nice uh, viscose twill. So it's super drapey, but it has like a real softness to it as well. Um, I really, really like it a lot. My second FO is, sorry, if you see me looking over, I'm looking at my notes. My second FO is also sewing related. So on the last episode, I showed you the muslin for my atlas top which is a pattern by stitch Witch patterns and i sewed it up in the final fabric and i'll put a video of that in here and i'm really happy with how it turned out please forgive how wrinkly my skirt is in this video but i had intended these as a matching set and i think they turned out really cute so this pattern is available up to a 50 inch bust um, and i would really encourage this designer to expand their size range. I know it's something that they're working on and this was one of their earlier patterns, but would love to see this offered in some wider sizes. I made the largest size, which to me is not at all size inclusive. So would love to see that from Stitch Witch Patterns, but overall it's a cute top. Um, definitely required some fitting adjustments for my size. If you're interested in that, you can hear. Um, I talk through in detail in the last episode about all of the changes uh, that I made after making my first muslin, but I really like how it turned out. And this is going to be, this dress and that outfit are probably going to be taking on my trip next week, which I'll talk a little bit more about at the end. All right, so moving on to knitting FOs. I have three today, and two of them were cast on and finished since we last recorded. <laughs> so the first thing I want to say is, um, so this is a little bit of a story before this FO. So uh, my sister Laura and my partner Troy and a lot of our friends are very into Dungeons and Dragons. Started getting super into it during COVID as I know many people did. And uh, you know, I've been talking to them about it. I've never played, but I'm interested in trying it. And my sister gave me these dice as a gift. And they're so beautiful. She 
finished them for me. They're like resin dice with little flowers in them. They're so pretty. They're clear resin and they have little dried flowers in them. And so she like finished them and then like inked in the numbers and everything and gave them to me as a gift for when I hopefully get to play. So I of course had to knit a dice bag. <laughs> so my first finished object is this little knitted bag. Isn't it adorable? So that's where I keep my dice. And it's just a little drawstring bag. And I just thought that was the cutest thing. So the pattern is called Two Hour Dice Bag. And it's um, from iCast Mending. And I'll link this all below in Ravelry. This is a free pattern if you subscribe to their newsletter. Um, but yeah, it took me a little more than two hours, if I'm being honest. But I was not in a rush to finish it. You definitely could. I think now that I've made one, I could make more much more quickly. Um, but I feel like this is a great, like recipe also for a large, if you could easily make it larger or smaller, um, if you wanted a larger like gift bag size or project bag size. But yeah, I just thought this little guy's cute. So you basically knit the two square, two panels, assemble it. And then it has this little drawstring, braided drawstring with the little tassels. So yeah, that's my first FO, my two hour dice bag to keep my D and D Dyson. We'll see if I ever end up playing, but <laughs> I have the option if I want to. <laughs> uh, my second FO is socks. So I finished my two by two rib socks that I've been working on. Here they are. I'll just show one for the details. So uh, this is a part of a set of socks I'm making for my partner Troy. And this is the second pair. So here's the first pair. These were three by one rib. And then the second pair is two by two rib. So first and second pairs here. And I really, really like how these turned out. This yarn softens up beautifully after washing. Um, I picked up this yarn at Yarnify in Chicago, which is a local yarn store there. And it the brand is Three Irish Girls. Uh, it's their Adorn Lux base, and this color is Savannah, which is where I'm going next week. So more on that later in the whip section. But yeah, I love this color. It's like a speckly, dark, spooky rainbow. It's very pretty. I really like how these turned out. Just the color variation is so nice. So yeah, so set, sock set two of three for Troy is done. And I've moved on to the third final set, which I'll share more about in whips. Am I forgetting anything about these? Let me see. Um, I didn't use a pattern. I just cast on uh, my basic vanilla sock, which for me is 64 stitches, uh, five inches of two by two ribbing, heel flap and gusset French heel construction, and then um, decrease in grafted toe. And that's it for that. I'm getting a very nice squishy like sock pile here. All right, and my last FO is also one that I cast on and cast off since we last recorded. So I was on Instagram one night, just scrolling through my feed, looking at everyone's projects. And also, I don't know about you, but my Instagram feed is 100% crafting. Is anyone else, is, are you the same way? <laughs> like ever since I, I used to have a personal Instagram that I used for both, and ever since I made like a craft specific Instagram, I feel like I live in this little crafting corner of Instagram and it makes me so happy because it's such a lovely welcoming community. Anyway, so I was scrolling and I saw someone's, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was. It might've been Jackie. Uh, I saw a super pretty colorful version of the Friday Shrug by uh, Jackie Rose from the Caddy Jacksonettes podcast. And it just really like sparked something in me and inspired me. I was like, I just felt this urge to like, go to my sewing room and like I had to like pull out all of my scrap yarns and like play with color and put something together. So I immediately cast on and have since finished the Friday Shrug by Jackie Rose. So it's a little hard to show so you can see. So I just pulled a bunch of sock yarn scraps um, from my stash and let me actually put a picture in of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like. 
Um, but yeah, this is so fun. It's, um, it's a free pattern. It's just one by one rib. Um, and then, so there's like the Friday shrug, the Saturday shrug and the Sunday shrug. And I think they're all a different gauge. Like Friday, the one I knit is a DK. You use two strands of fingering. I think the Saturday shrug is like a worsted maybe or bulky. And then there's like a super bulky one. Um, but yeah, so you use nine, I mean, the pattern suggests nine colors of yarn. This one, the Friday Shrug, also comes with a suggested fade. Um, so I tried to follow that pattern as closely as I could, but I was using scrap yarn. So for a couple colors, I ran out early or some I had more. So I kind of had to fudge it towards the end. Um, but yeah, I can try and remember where some of the yarns are from. So uh, this, oops, I just ran into the camera. Sorry. This chartreuse yarn uh, was gifted to me by Jess, uh, my sock swap partner. It's Lane yarns and it's such a pretty color. I love it. It's like a grello, like a grungy yellow. Um, this green is left over from socks. The white was my Kutar socks. The hot pink. I'm trying to remember what I bought that for. I feel like I just bought it when I first started knitting socks and plan to make socks with it and never did and I've since used it in a couple of scrap projects um but it's like really vibrant pink the purple was from socks um and then this pretty periwinkle in the middle was a mini that I picked up at a local yarn store and it was just perfect for this and then we fade back down and then on this end you have a few other little color pops so there's this uh, light blue, which is alpaca that I recently used in my first Savannah sock sample. Navy's leftover sock yarn, and the, this tan is actually leftover sock yarn from the first pair of socks I ever finished. So that's kind of cool, nice little memory. It's pretty bright and crazy. Like I don't, I'll definitely wear it around the house. I don't know if I have the confidence to wear it out and about, but it is very fun and I really like the way it turned out and the fabric is like so nice and squishy. I'm really enjoying playing with like my scrap yarns and especially with marling um, this year. And I think this really made me wanna cast on a blanket um, to use up my scraps. And to I just really enjoy having something simple like this to knit, especially like rib or I don't know, brioche, like something that makes this really squishy fabric. So I'm thinking about casting on the Bits and Bobs blanket. Um, I'll put the designer information and a picture in. Um, I've seen Yana from F uh, Finished Knitting Stories is working on a Bits and Bobs blanket and it just looks like so cozy and I feel like it would be such a great place to use up any little amount of scraps or you know like I have some minis on my shelf that I don't know if I'm gonna use them. I feel like I'm bad at using minis. So something like that that could just use up sock yarn scraps and minis um, and just have as like a long-term running project because this is just so nice and I loved having this to work on when I wanted something really simple. So I'm thinking about casting that on soon. So yeah, that's all my FOs. I hope I didn't forget anything. <laughs> um, yeah, very fun, very colorful. And uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my works in progress. Okay, so my first whip is socks, as usual. Oh, okay. Um, so I was just showing you my FO, the two by two rib, and the first pair of socks I knit for Troy, the three by one rib. And this color is desert turquoise, by the way, it's the same base as the other pair, also from Yarnify. And so for the third, Oh, for the third pair, I knew I wanted something with some ribbing and I knew I wanted uh, color work or stripes and I couldn't really find a pattern that I loved. So I decided to design my own. So I designed the Savannah socks named after the yarn base and also that we're going there on a trip next week. And I did finish the first sample of those already in the size small, which you've seen before, but I'll quickly show them again. So it's a stripey sock with a different width of stripes and then a contrast cuff, words, toe and heel. So that's the first pair. So then I'm now knitting a pair of those to match back with these. And I finished the first one and it looks crazy. <laughs> Whoa, I haven't blocked this yet. So 
it looks weird like proportionally but also the colors look totally insane and I'm here for it I love it even though it's crazy I feel like these yarns are really friendly like you can see the little pops of teal coming out there in the darker speckled yarn this is actually the first time I'm seeing these all together <laughs> they look fun as a trio so yeah we've got the solid teal the variegated and then the crazy stripe guy coming in these are fun <laughs> and Troy likes them so that's all that matters so yeah I finished the first one it'll definitely look better once it's blocked um and I cast on the second one already and I'm just gonna keep plugging away so yeah this is the savannah socks which are my design um this is the medium size again once this is blocked these will look like more sock shaped <laughs> and i'm excited to release this as a free pattern soon i need to uh, finish this pair and then still test the size large and then i'm planning to just release it as a free pattern on ravelry because it's, it's pretty much just a vanilla sock the pattern just gives instruction for how to do the striping if you want this kind of stripey look these are really wild Okay, so yeah, that is my first whip. Still plugging away on those. These are really fast for me. I knit this in two days. Like I just, they really just don't, I feel like I can just kind of zoom on vanilla socks at this point. So that's my first whip. Second whip is one you have not seen in a while. I think I last showed this on episode three. And I should say I have right now like seven whips, but I feel like it fluctuates anywhere from like five to 10 probably. And I'm just, I don't, I like to have a variety of projects so I can jump around and work on what I feel like working on, but I don't always work on all of them every week. So I'm only ever gonna show you the ones I touched since we last talked. So um, if you don't see something, no, it's still there. If I decide to frog something, I'll tell you about it. It's just there in the background. I'm still working away on it. I just. I'm one woman with many whips, so yes, but this one you haven't seen in a while. So, and I apologize, this one's a little hard to show too. This is my Keswick scarf. Um, it's getting big. I added this, so the entire pink vertical stripe here that goes all the way along the top, uh, I added since we last talked. So this pattern is by Zandy Peters for Pom Pom Magazine issue 41, which is their summer 22 issue. And I am knitting it in all a uh, wandering flock, which this was definitely like a special yarn purchase. I hope you can hear me through the scarf. <laughs> um, so yeah, the mohair background is the color Alpine Blue and that runs throughout. It's held with everything. And then the other colors are, let me see if I can hold this with one hand so I can show you. So we've got uh, navy, navy blue, unicorn magic, which is the white speckled yarn. Sorry, I'm reading here. Ma uh, electric orchid is the pink, YOLO is the yellow. And you can see how they get to like interplay throughout the scarf. And it is getting really big. Um, I'm not halfway done yet. I'm two stripes away from being halfway done. And it is pretty unwieldy already. It's kind of a beast. Um, but it's so beautiful. I am i can't wait to finish this and wear it. It's so, so beautiful. But yeah, I just wanted to show you a little progress on that guy. Um, it is Intarja. So... It's very slow going because there's so much yarn management. There's at least always eight and sometimes nine <laughs> little balls of yarn that you have to manage when you're working on this as you work across the rows. So it is a very like slow meditative knit. Like if I want something where I know I can like sit down and have space around me and focus on it, then that's the time for me to work on it. But it is very slow going. Like this is probably gonna be like a multi-year project but it's so worth it because it's so beautiful and such a beautiful yarn so yeah I got another stripe done on that and still working away on it and last but not least is my Yoon sweater which is a pattern by November Knits and it is available up to a 66 inch bust um 
I made a lot of progress on this since I last showed it. I think when I last showed this, I had just passed it on and I have since uh, finished the yoke and almost finished uh, the body to where I need to split for the front and back. So this um, is, I'm knitting this in Deriverum Natura's Gilead base. The color is Cacao. And you can see it's like a really rich chocolate brown. It's showing up lighter on the camera than it actually is um, from my light. I'm sorry, it's really rainy here today, so I have a little bit of artificial light, um, but maybe that's a little more accurate. So it has this really pretty chunky double folded two by two knit neckband. And then it has these um, rib pattern, rib detail raglan increases. And it has a pretty deep um, armhole and the body's just knit in stockinette. And I just need to knit a little bit of body and then I'll split for the front and back, which are fully like two by two ribbed panels. So yeah, I this is so soft and squishy. I love this yarn. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite yarns. Uh, this is worsted weight. I think anything I need to knit in worsted, I'm like gonna look for this first because I love this yarn. It's so soft, definitely next to skin soft and so, plush um i feel like it has really it just looks really nice so yeah that's the front back's the same there are some short rows um so you can see the front neck is dropped down a little bit but yeah i'm about to uh split for the front and back panels i feel like all things considered this is knitting up really quickly um like i said it is worsted weight so that helps and yeah and then it's just onto the sleeves so uh, I don't think I'm going to take this on the trip with me just because we're going to be in some warmer weather, but excited to keep working on it when I get back. That is it for whips today. Oh no, I lied. There's one more. Um, I'm going to just put a picture in because I can't even show it to you. Uh, I just wanted to touch base on my Omega quilt. So I finished piecing the top, which I think I showed you last time. And since then I've gotten it basted, which was a monumental effort. <laughs> I have a really big, like six foot by four foot counter height, uh, cutting table that I use to cut out my projects and just, we use it as like a work table. So I did it on that, but it still touched the floor on every side. It was huge. I just had to wrestle with it, but it is basted. So here's a picture. <laughs> it is just like a big quilt lump right now. And I'm not gonna lie, I feel kind of intimidated by it. It's so heavy and so unwieldy. I, the idea of the prospect of knitting it on my home machine, or knitting it, oh my gosh, quilting it on my home machine is a little bit stressing me out. <laughs> I think once I get started, it'll be fine. I just need to do it. And I definitely have not been feeling like well enough to tackle that recently. So it's gonna have to wait. Uh, till we get back from our trip but i think in april i will be able to finish it once i'm feeling better um i just need to buckle down and get it done because <laughs> i have another quilt to work on after that so checking in on that got it basted it's really pretty i'm excited to finish it um but yeah it's a monster all right so let me pause here i have one quick acquisition to share with you today all right, so acquisitions. Um, I have recently purchased a good bit of fabric for my spring sewing plans. I'm not gonna talk about that here today because I'm gonna talk about it extensively in my bonus video that's all about the spring sewing plans. So if you're interested in seeing more about that, please go ahead and watch that video when it comes out later this week. Um, like I said, I'll do a deep dive into all of the fabrics that I purchased for that. The one thing I did want to share with you today is I got the newest edition of Pom Pom Magazine. I love Pom Pom Magazine. It's, I love getting this in the mail every quarter. It's so beautiful and colorful. I feel like they're making me love color more. Like truly the styling is so beautiful. All the patterns are amazing. So I just got this last night and I've really enjoyed flipping through it. I haven't gotten to read the articles or anything yet, but I definitely will. Um, but I just quickly wanted to show you a couple of the patterns that I want to try from this book. The first one's actually featured on the back and it is the, let me see, the overprint bag. So it's this really cute crochet bag. Now I 
can crochet. Uh, that was the first craft I ever learned. My mom taught me when I was like eight years old. Um, and I can still do it really proficiently, but I don't enjoy it as much as knitting. My mom is still an avid crocheter and I think I'm gonna ask her to make this for me. <laughs> um, I think I might just ask her to use some scrap yarns and make one for me because I really want to have one. I just, I don't, I crochet, I, I could see coming back to it at some point in my life. I just, right now, it's not my go-to. I'm very into knitting. So yeah, I might ask her to make that for me. It's a really cute little bag. Uh, the other one are the Strata socks. You can see they have this really cool texture and the two by two striping on the on the bottom of the foot. It's kind of like my Savannah socks I was showing you earlier. So yeah, I feel like these would be a fun to play with like neon and neutral or um, anything like that. This whole issue is very neons and neutral and I know Amy's, um, La Bienna May's book, Neons and Neutrals just came out as well. The one I really want to try is this, the overlay pullover. I really, really like the short sleeve version. It's, I believe it's brioche. I just love how the colors inter, intermingle, like so pretty. There's a long sleeve version as well. That's really beautiful. That one is definitely on my list. I just, I really like the short sleeve one. I don't have any short sleeve sweaters. I feel like I could find a place for that in my wardrobe. Um, our office at work is always hot when it's cold. It, if it's cold outside, it's going to be a billion degrees in the office and vice versa. So I feel like something like transitional like that, I could, I could make that work. The other really, really cool piece in here, which I don't know if I would ever make, honestly, and I'm definitely pronouncing this wrong, is the Weffen or Weffen uh, tee. It is this woven crochet top. It's so cool. Something else maybe to ask my mom to make for me. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's really cool. I don't know what like colors I would choose for that, but it's beautiful and it's such an interesting technique. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of other really beautiful patterns in here as well. Those are just a couple of the ones that I had my eye on. And that's it for content. So I just, uh, just to do a quick chat, I was going to give you a little update on my garden planning. So you can see back here, my little sprouts are in here. Um, they're coming along. They're definitely the tomatoes and the peppers are um, growing and that's so exciting to see. Um, we also started prepping the yard for where we're going to put the garden beds in. So that's all very exciting. Um, I feel like early April, like mid, late April is when I'll be able to plant some like onions and stuff like that. Maybe my beans. Um, and then may is when we're gonna be hitting the ground running and planting everything um very excited i just last time we had a garden was a couple of years ago at our old apartment and we had so many jalapenos from our jalapeno plant we froze a bunch of them and i just used the last one this week so i'm like perfect timing. I need more peppers in my life. Very excited. Let me know if you're planting anything or like dreaming up your garden plans. Um, and the last thing I was going to touch on today is a road trip knitting. So like I've been mentioning, we're going on a trip next week. Uh, we are going on a little road trip with some of our friends to Nashville for two nights. And then we're going down to Savannah, Georgia for a few nights, which is one of my favorite cities uh, in the U.S. It's so beautiful. Uh, historical beautiful old buildings beautiful trees and nature really good food it's right by the river it's just a beautiful city um or river sorry that's the ocean <laughs> it's a port city um and there's a beach so really excited I feel like we're gonna get a little mix of everything on our trip some nature some city it's gonna be a good time um there is a little yarn shop in Savannah I'm gonna try and visit and if I can remember I'll try and get some footage for you all as well um, but yeah, would love any uh, recommendations for Nashville or Savannah. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to take on the trip with me. And actually, I just saw something across the room that I wanted to grab. One second. <laughs> okay, so my plans are to bring these socks. I would like to finish the second one. I already started that. I think that'll be easy peasy. And then, like I said, I still need to knit the uh, large size sample of the Savannah socks. 
So I'm going to bring yarn to do that as well. And I went stash diving last night to try and find yarn for it. I wanted to do a more like multi version where like different sections would be a different color. So I think for the main color, I'm going to use this purple, which is a uh, Retrosaria Pomar Mondim. The colorway is 106. It's like a really pretty dusty purple. And then I had a few minis um, from Charming You that I actually won in a giveaway for uh, the uh, year of socks last year. And I pulled a couple of those. So we've got like a very pretty pastel kind of timely Eastery palette. So there's this uh, purple one is called Sweet Pea. The yellow is called Citrus. And then this pink one is called Coral Reef. And so I'm thinking about doing like uh, those wider stripes at the cuff, maybe in the pink, the heel in yellow, and then the lighter purple stripes in the foot to just get this really pretty like color blocked pastel um sock set <laughs> sorry the sickness my words aren't working but yeah these minis are really cute like they have a lot of different color pops in them I don't know maybe this will turn out too eastery and I won't like it but honestly the size that I'm knitting these I don't even personally know anyone that could wear a sock that large I probably should have knit them in like a more neutral colorway or something um maybe that then it would have been easier to find a home for them but i'm knitting them and i want to knit them in pretty pastel easter colors so that's my first uh road trip knitting plan is to finish all the samples for the savannah socks hopefully or at least uh get pretty far into the size large sample and uh my last knitting my other project i want to bring um, because I started this project on a road trip with the same friends we're going with last year and it's been hibernating is my outline tea by Jessie May, which um, I did a whip audit a couple episodes ago and I showed that on that episode, but I'm knitting it in uh, Ritual Dyes Undine in the colorway Jewel Weed, which is a really pretty bright orange and it's all, honestly almost done. Like uh, the whole body uh, the whole body is done. I think one of the front panels is done and I just need to do the other panel and the back and then it has like little tiny short sleeves. So it's almost done. I just need to finish it. I need to take it out and look at it. Like I said, it's been hibernating for like six to nine months at this point. So I need to take it out, look at it, figure out what I'm doing um, and then hopefully make some good progress on that on our trip as well. So yeah, that is all I have for you today. Like I said, I'll be uh, recording and publishing the Spring Sewing Plans episode soon as well. Um, and I hope you'll watch that one. Um, I know not everyone, uh, some people are probably just here for knitting. Some people are probably just here for sewing. So if you're just here for sewing, that's the one for you. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I'm so happy every time I see a new subscriber or read one of your comments. I love reading your comments. Uh, let me know where you're watching from. Love to hear from you. And yeah, thank you so much. I will see you soon and have a great day. Bye.